22-year-old Peter Hardiman's got his hands on the last Chelsea shirt from the club's shop before it closed its doors. He's wearing a piece of football history. Now the Roman Abramovich era is over. And they closed the door behind us, put the signs up. Everything was really normal in the shop. Um, you wouldn't have thought there was sanctions at all, but obviously then the doors are closed and that's it. The amount of money he invested, he really seems like he, he loves the club. It probably is all just a lie pumped out by some media team of his to, I don't know, to make him look good. Games will be allowed to continue, salaries will still be paid, but UK government sanctions have stopped Chelsea from selling merchandise and even new tickets to matches, and lucrative sponsorship deals are in jeopardy. Abramovich has owned Chelsea for 19 years, overseeing a reversal of the club's fortunes with a massive injection of cash. But Moscow's invasion of Ukraine has focused the attention on his alleged ties with Vladimir Putin, putting the oligarch on a collision course with the British government. I think when you look at what is happening in Ukraine and you, you look at the, uh, the casual rejection of every norm of civilised behaviour in, in bombing a, a maternity hospital, I think people in this country uh, can see that people connected uh, to the Putin regime uh, need to be sanctioned and that's what we're doing. The sanctions are immediate, including a freeze on all assets and a travel ban. It's something Abramovich appears to have seen coming, announcing the club was up for sale last week and putting some of his multi-million dollar portfolio of London properties on the market. Abramovich also has a stake in Evraz Steel, headquartered in London, with operations in Russia and Ukraine. The British government said the company had potentially been involved in supplying steel to the Russian military and used in the production of tanks. After two weeks of fighting in Ukraine, the net is finally starting to close around some of those seen as facilitators of Vladimir Putin and as such, the war in Ukraine. But the question is whether this is two weeks too late to prevent Abramovich and other oligarchs from simply shifting their money elsewhere. Abramovich also holds Portuguese and Israeli passports and has spent a lot of time in the UAE. There are no shortage of places for him to stash his billions. It's a similar story for the six other oligarchs added to Britain's sanctions list, including Alexei Miller, the head of Russian energy giant Gazprom, Igor Sechin, the owner of Rosneft Oil Company, and metals magnate Oleg Deripaska, all members of Putin's inner circle. It's being called the end of the Roman Empire, sanctions aimed at stopping Abramovich and others making money in the UK. As for the club, its future's uncertain. It needs a new well-heeled owner quickly. Now the most prominent Russian oligarch in Britain is no longer welcome. Neve Barker, Al Jazeera, London.